linear algebra in the BM will be will be will be singular and uh, the immersion may introduce problem and uh, for the doubly connected domain with a whole the spirit eigenvalue and uh, the spirit eigen solution may appear for the red one is the true true case for the blue one uh, for the blue one is the true case for the red one is a warning message the drop of the point does not indicate the real resonance but is a spirit resonance if we use the hammer to attack the structure it cannot introduce the resonance only for the blue point only for the blue point your hammer can excite the resonance and for the degenerate boundary if there is no dual boundary element formulation that was developed in 1988 with my advisor professor hong ki hong professor hong he retired last month because he was already 70 years old in 1989 we introduced hyper singular formulation to solve the problem and uh, the parasite can be treated now i will show you some paradox for example for structural dynamics of a single degree of freedom when the excitation frequency is a uh, omega when omega is a uh, equal to the natural frequency of the structure solution will diverge because the particular solution will have uh, one over zero however if you introduce the complementary solution and add it to the total solution and applying the last pito rule we can get the resonance of solution so it will not diverge at any at any time it listeners at uh, this function of t sine omega t in a similar way of a wage very famous 2d elasticity wage problem for a special angle of alpha the analytical solution of the stress interior inside the wage everywhere is infinite it is stress in the which at any place is infinite everywhere it is not reasonable for a spatial angle but if we introduce some eigenfunction to join the total solution we can get a unique solution and the, the stress only diverge at the wedge point and is finite inside the wedge so that one is the reasonable one from the engineering point of view and if your mathematical model is not well posed you have you have not the sufficient constraint you will get your solution space become larger and larger and uh, that one is not uh, reasonable in my area we employ the fundamental solution log r to construct the boundary integral formulation to solve a very simple interior domain of triangle when the triangle is bent to a special size it uh, we all have the singularity problem. The inference matrix may be singular. For the scalar potential problem, 
governed by the 2D Laplace equation, only one point, only one size will have the rank deficiency in the inference matrix. But for the two-dimensional elasticity, because it is a vector potential, we have a U1 and a U2 in X and Y direction displacement. So if we face the vector potential problem in 2D elasticity, there will result in two spatial size that the, your boundary integral formulation will not give the correct result. And all the information was published by my group. And the, the discriminator of the formula is this one. Okay, now I will show you the degenerate boundary. What is degenerate boundary? If there is not the sufficient, if, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Professor Chen, again you say. I, I will check it. You will say again you say. You, you, I will uh, report the file again. Sorry. Okay. Wait a moment, sorry. It's okay, no problem. Can you see the PPT now? Yes, 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 sir. yes, sir. It's okay? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So now I, I will show you the uh, degenerate boundary. If there is no, is, if there is no sufficient and unnecessary formulation, BM involves a paradise for solving problems containing the degenerate boundary. But if we introduce the hypersingular formulation in the dual BM that was developed by Hong and Chen 30 years ago, and if the dual BM is available, the BEM is a paradise for solving problems with degenerate boundary because the Cauchy singular integral equation is not sufficient. We should introduce the so called hyper singular integral equation that is also called Hadama principal value instead of Cauchy principal value. And we can introduce singular integral equation on the different side of the degenerate boundary. And we introduce the hyper singular integral equation on the right hand side, and they are both independent. And we can construct a rank, a full rank inference matrix, and we can get to the inversion. However, the conventional one only have the Cauchy singular integral equation. It is not sufficient. And if we have the dual BM, we need another to introduce the so-called artificial boundary to divide the domain into subdomains. And uh, we can discretize the correct boundary step by step, step by step. So we do not uh, require to introduce the artificial boundary. Okay, now, I will show you during the 30 years, I have applied my dual boundary element applications in Taiwan. So now I will show you the successful experience in Taiwan because 
I have been working in the Institute of Military Institute. So I apply my method to solve a lot of military problems in the Army, in the Navy, in the Air Force. We have applied to the V band structure. We also applied to the breakwater, and we also applied to the screen for, for the noise, for the noise reduction. And we also applied to the rocket and the missile. And we also applied to the color war under the dam. Because all the problem see the pile in the dam, under the dam, a crack in the V band, a breakwater in the sea, a screen in the air, a thin air foil in the aerodynamics. All the geometries are the degenerate boundary. So my dual formulation is very powerful to solve all our problems appearing in Taiwan. Now, I will show you before our introduction of dual BEM, if we apply final element to solve the crack loss. It is terrible that we need a remesh at any press on the correct tip, remesh and a remesh. So it is not good for engineer. You need a remesh anytime near the, near the tip. A professor of Ingraphia in Cornell University, USA, they can solve the problem by using boundary elements, but they do not discretize only the boundary. They introduce, they introduce the artificial boundary and divided the domain with the general boundary into two domains, two domains without the general boundary. And each boundary can be matched by the com compatible relationship and the equilibrium condition. So you, so they introduce a lot of degree of freedoms and the, the division is not unique. And the, for the half space or the, for the half plane problem, the extension to the artificial boundary is infinite. So it is not uh, okay for this approach to extend to infinite domain or so-called hard plane problem. But our approach, dual BM, is made in Taiwan. This MIT is made in Taiwan, not the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. And I hope my MIT is that I can meet you in Taiwan in the future for the audience, okay? So the duo BM made in Taiwan, MIT since 1986 in my master thesis. And I published it in 1988 at ASC Engineering Mechanics Division. And uh, I have a paper on the ASME, the ASME Applied Mechanics Review and the near 500 sightings. So this is a color wall under the dam. This is a final element discretization. This is a boundary element only, no artificial boundary, no subdomain, and we can get the better results. We have a, uh, fewer nodes, we have a fewer boundary elements, we have a fewer CPU. And uh, this was published in MIT in 1989. This MIT is a Massachusetts, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And the, the, and the Professor A.K. Chia in the US Bureau of Recommendation applied my software to solve the dam stability for his work. And the, the main reason is that we introduced the hyper singular formation to deal with the general boundary. 
why we need a differentiation for such a polynomial we divided by this uh, quotient. This is a quotient and this is the reminder, but this is double root. So only one concern cannot determine the reminder coefficient P and Q because we have a two coefficient P and Q. So we need differentiation. After differentiation, the double pole will become a single pole and we can get another independent equation for PQ and uh, two independent equation for PQ to determine PQ. So 40 years ago, I applied the similar idea to differentiate the cosy singular integral equation and I get the hyper singular integral equation, but the Cauchy principal value is transformed to the Hadamard principal value. And we apply our dual BEM to the free space, free surface. This is a free surface seepage. So we have only a certain iteration, but the final element need more and more times. Now I will show you our dual BEM can solve the transmission and the refraction problem in the breakwater. And our dual BEM can match the experimental result very well. This experimental result was done by my colleague, Professor Wong and Professor Yi. Ye. And uh, dual BEM can match well with the experimental data. And uh, in my university, we have a very special ocean lab. The only one tank the only one lab that can simulate the irregular wave, the only one in Taiwan. And in time you visit Taiwan, you should visit this ocean lab. Okay, by taking this chance, I will show you, I'm very happy that some Indian peoples show their interest to my dual BM. Professor Vijay in uh, IIT Chingne. I remember the former name is uh, Madras, right? Vijay. We cooperate our dual BEM to solve the H type. This is H type, porous breakwater. And it was published last uh, the year before last year. And uh, Another professor, Niche, also apply our dual BM to solve the, the cage envelope of breakwater. And uh, this paper was now revised by the GAMM, that is a journal of Germany. So I'm very happy that I have a chance to cooperate with, with the Indian people. So I show you what I contribute in this field. In 1984 to 1986, what I have done is that I changed the singular integral equation to hyper singular integral equation by differentiation. The conventional Cauchy principal value is, not, is, not the, uh, is now transformed to the Hadamard principal value. But I will mention to you for the Researchers in the solid mechanics, in the solid mechanics, researchers call it Hadamard principal value. But since I have looked a lot of literature in the aerodynamics, aerodynamics researchers call the mathematics Megara principal value. So now the terminology of Hadamard principal value and the Megara principal value are the same. So in 19 69, Professor Ruizo introduced the boundary integral equation to solve the elasticity problem. After 30 years, to 20 years, I introduced the dual BEM to solve problems with crack. But Professor Ruizo solved the problems, the domain without the general boundary, but my case with the general boundary of crack, thin air foil, color wall, 
or screen. So now I will tell the students in the audience, although we have a lot of books to read, but during my study of this problem, I found in the legate and the due, they have a paper, they have a textbook on the boundary integral equation method for porous medium. And in his book, in their book, he said the singularity may occur when the base point and the field point coincide, but they are not integrable in 1980s. But it is integrable in the Hadamard sense, in the ligate sense, in the dual sense. It is not meaningful. So Hadama principal value is uh, similar to the Hadama final part. Now I show you the main application to, to the army. This is a solid rocking motor with a crack here. This is the final element result by Nastrin. And we can no, the failure position is here, and the failure mode is correct here. And this is a stress reliever. So I applied my dual BM to simulate the correct growth here. And we can apply our dual BM to solve problems on the MLIs. What is MLIs? Multiple launch rocket system. Another one I applied to the Navy. This is a so-called, is a very similar to the Harpoon missile and the airfoil, this is a thin airfoil, thin airfoil. So the general boundary occurs. I apply my dual boundary element to solve the aerodynamic problems and we get the panel pressure. So you know that the BM is nothing that is called panel method in the potential theory. Now, I apply to the Air Force. I'm very fortunate that I can apply my dual boundary element in solid mechanics and the aerodynamics. This is a missile, and this is a pylon structure. The IDF airplane is made by Taiwanese. And thin uh, air for you, means the degenerate boundary. So we have a two problems. One is the air load prediction. So this is a thin air for your panel method. I apply my Hadamard principal value to solve the thin air for your aerodynamics and uh, I can plot the, the vortex flow. And uh, another point is that the, the missile of the, this missile is very long. It's uh, uh, seven meters. So this missile has uh, seven sections that the, each section is connected by the V, v, v band structure. So for the aerodynamic simulation, we get the uh, panel method here, but for the structural mechanics, for the solid mechanics for the V band structure, see the following. This is a connection of V band, V band, and this is a V band. And after, after the airplane uh, taking off landing, taking off landing, fatigue loading, fatigue loading, and uh, the correct growth here. If we apply the final element approach, we need uh, 600, well, 6,000 elements. But if we apply the boundary element mesh and the correct boundary, boundary element mesh, Using my dual bound element, I need only 60 elements and we get the better accuracy and we get the fewer CPU time and we can predict the stress intensity factor and we can predict the correct growth very well. So this is another successful experience in my country. We apply MIT approach to solve our MIT airplane to solve our problem of uh, missile rocket MIT. So the original work in 1988, 
is uh, more sightings. Now, I will show you the degen scale. What is degen scale? For two dimensional Laplace problem, for spatial geometry, for the unit circle, the BM will give a, will fail. For elliptic case, the major and the minor axis, the length plus together to two fail. For triangular, for the annular case, for the angle polynomial, uh, angle shape, they have the critical size. And for infinite domain with a two, two hole, they have also critical size. And uh, even for the crack or for the rigid inclusion of a nine rigid inclusion, we also have a design scale. So it is very terrible that I can design a very special size of crack or rigid inclusion and uh, ask you to solve it by integral equation the unreasonable result may appear. This is uh, the main point that I will show, show to you. So this is similar to the Achilles tendon uh, in Greece story. So BM has his Achilles tendon. It may fail in some spatial geometry. And uh, this is the Achilles, Achilles. Tendon. And this is a degenerate scale. So, failure of BIM for the spatial geometry. We have a, all the, this paper was published in the uh, Pure Mathematics Journal, CPAA, in 2022. And the double degeneracy is the last row of this one. All, all the above, all the above except the last one, we have the so-called degenerate scale. But for the degenerate boundary, they may also have degenerate scale. So this is uh, the main point that I will introduce to you, that the integral equation may introduce double degeneracy in both degenerate scale and the degenerate boundary. So it is very interesting that the general scale and the general boundary may appear simultaneously at the same time. So why there is a degenerate scale? I will show you the main reason. In the BM, we have a four parasites. Parasites of the general scale, the general boundary, spirit's eigenvalue, fictitious frequency. All the problems stems from the introduction of fundamental solution. So fundamental solution is a matchmaker or is a troublemaker. It introduces a, 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 a paradise. So it is a matchmaker. Professor Chen? Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Yeah, Professor Chen. I have how, how many minutes I have? Uh, OK, now you can share. So how many minutes I have now? Uh, maybe uh, five, five minutes more. OK, uh, five minutes I will close my talk because uh, it is uh, one o'clock in Taiwan. So it is okay. lunch time for, for yes, students. Yes. And, okay, okay, okay. So now I will show you. 
at five minutes, I will cross. The main reason is the due to the di dimensionist argument because of the log function, because the local function, exponential function, sine function, Henkel function, the argument should be non-dimensional. And now I show you the degenerate kernel. Degenerate kernel is uh, that uh, for a circular domain, we can introduce the rho phi r c. And inside the circle, we have a expression and outside the corner, we have another expression. And we can uh, have another observer origin. And we can also have the, the actual symmetric potential of log r behavior. Now I show you the uh, polar coordinate there for log r and c. Da. This is a c da, log r plus i c. Da. And this is uh, inside and outside. And this is another observer inside and outside. And this is a, a degenerate kernel. And uh, now it's a difficult coordinate inside and outside. And the digital kernel is a very powerful and an analytical tool. Yeah, Professor. Yeah. Sir, sorry. Sir, your screen is not visible, sir. We're not shared in this piece. Pardon? Pardon? Can you share your screen? Is, is it okay? Is it okay? No, you please share your screen. You you see the screen or not? Yeah, no. You uh, again you share your slide. So so now I show you the slides and uh, we have a, a similar animation of. Uh, no 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 no, uh, sir. Uh, your slide is not visible. Pardon? Your slide is not visible. You share your slide. So now you cannot you cannot see my slide. No. No. May I continue? Uh, yes, yes. You can continue, but your slides are not visible. My slides not good. Not visible. Sir, can you sir, can you your, your slides can you not visible, sir. Please share your, Please your screens. Your screen. Slides. Slides. You sure? Is it uh, okay? Now it is uh, wrong in the next one. No, 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 no. You share your slide. Uh -huh. Share your slide. Slide is. Can you share your slide? Presentation slides. Whole image can't be seen. Hey, I that is a cartoon. My my slides is animation. I'm sorry, maybe that is due to due to animation. Sorry, it, 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 it is uh, animation, so maybe it's some problem. I, I, I think uh, there, there is uh, animation, so you cannot uh, see, see the PVD. So I think time is limited. So now I, I think uh, it is open for any question you, if the audience has, has any interest to my talk, okay? Because yes, uh, time is, is running out, okay? Oh, okay, okay. Pardon, sir. Sir. Anyone can ask now question. I think that uh, yes. all the uh, presenting. Audience, if you're uh, having any questions, just uh, ask the same to Professor Jetty Singh. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, if there is no questions, no means so I have any questions, sir? sir? No, 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 no. I have one question. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Professor Chen, 
when okay. you are considering circular structure circular structure so yeah, that circular. time what will be your fundamental equation that is uh, uh, 2d the plus equation only but uh, also for the navier equation in 2d elasticity there is also the scale but two spatial size so for the two dimensional laplace equation only one spatial size will appear but for the vector potential of 2d elasticity of navier equation due to we have a, a lame constant two constants and uh, we have a two two critical size in 2d elasticity yeah okay thank you uh, now uh, yeah bardaran uh, sir sir yes sir sir yes sir sir if there is no any any other questions from participants begra sir no sir no sir conclude sir so we can conclude no, sir. yes sir you can conclude there is no i should mention the deep meaning of his appreciation for professor jati sen for his amazing presentation and the vem is a paradise for solving problems with the degenerate boundaries we also like to express our gratitude to professor jati sen for revealing his theory about the double degeneracy process of the vem and vem process and especially how it is used in noise reduction in army air force and navy your wonderful words have truly motivated us all sir thank you sir thank you for your wonderful presentation sir thank you sir. thank you thank you, uh, thank you. yeah uh, thank you very much professor chen now we can take a photo uh, siba sir can you tell all the participants to come forward but siba sir koala sir dr koala okay can i take photo sir uh, Uh, yes bapu ji sir tell to participant to come forward Bardaran sir, can you take the photo? Bapu ji sir, uh, uh, take the clip. Professor Bapu ji, take clip. Online participant. Can you on your camera? Bapu ji sir, take photo. Okay. 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 Okay.
maybe next time next you can visit our uh, university for the offline presentation thank you very much thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir Uh, sir, for ne next track, uh, we'll start after five minutes, tea break or what? We can start now. Shiba, sir. Hi, Marlene, ma'am. Hello, sir. Good, mo good morning. Good morning. Here, good sir. afternoon. Here, afternoon. Okay. <laughs> uh, now we can start? Yeah. Uh, Shall I introduce, sir? Uh, yeah, you can introduce. Uh, Good Professor morning. Sai, are you ready? Uh, one minute, ma'am. Professor Sai, are you ready? Okay. Oh, can, can you hear me? Yes, yes. You, uh, we are. Everything good? Yeah, everything is good. Okay. So now we can start? Yes, sir. Yeah, sure. Okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. Good morning. A word of warm welcome to one and all. I am pleased to introduce Professor Chia Cheng Tsai, a speaker for this e-session as a part of the third international workshop on numerical and analytical techniques in engineering problems. Professor Chai obtained his BS degree from National Taiwan University in 1997. He completed his PhD degree of civil engineering hydraulic division from National Taiwan University in 2002. He joined Department of Marine Environmental Engineering, National, Kaohsiung University of Science and Technology, Taiwan, as an assistant professor in 2009 and became a full professor and the department chair in 2012. In 2016, he visited Griffith University, Australia for half a year. As joint appointments, he has also worked in National Cheng Kung University from 2014 to 2017 and National Sun Yat-sen University from 2016 to 2021. In 2021, he moved to National Taiwan Ocean University as the Director of Center of Excellence for Ocean Engineering and became Distinguished Professor and Chair of Bachelor Degree Program in Ocean Engineering and Technology in 2022. He has published more than 90 SCI papers. He's also the Editorial Board Member of the Civil Engineering Journal, Journal of Marine Science and Engineering, and Journal of Civil Engineering and Materials Application. We welcome you, sir. He will now give a presentation titled The Eigenfunction Matching Method for Water-Based Scattering and of Breaking by Variable Structures and Bottoms. Now, over to the speaker, Professor Chai. Uh, good morning, Chairman and all the uh, audience. It's my pleasure to give, to share my study about the eigenfunction matching method for water wave scattering uh, and the breaking by variable structure in the buttons. Okay. Uh, so the outline of my talk will begin with the introduction and then the formulation of the, the EMR in short. And I will consider several different problems. Uh, 
such as the the uh, variable button and the sim barrier and the 14 structure and the variable button by uh, by Fiskars wave and also the the porous breakwater several different formulations and finally I will give some numerical result conclusion and the future works uh, so of course the what the 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 water wave scattering problem is uh, is a traditional uh, problem that's still uh, very interesting for several reasons. First, the the analytical solution are very rare uh, for this kind of problem, and uh, <coughs> the direct numerical simulation are usually very computational expensive, so. It, in engineering, if we want to make some preliminary, preliminary design purpose, we need to have a fast measurement or a fast estimation for these kind of problems, especially for some complex system. Here by complex system means they, they probably have several different kind of effect like the sim barrier, porous structure, 14 structure and uh, for example, the moving eye and the other uh, effect or, or the ice covered uh, wave. All these kinds of different effects, if you want to put into uh, consideration, then the solution are some, sometimes very difficult. And for these kind of problem, they are basically two uh, solutions. The first one is the, uh, the minor slope equation that was developed by Berkhoff in 1972. Okay, the, the minor slope equation was later uh, extended to including the, uh, the high order button effect, like the curvature and the, the slope, okay, in 1993 and 1995, and then to in, including the Evanescent more by, the, by uh, Porter and Stasiger in 1995. Uh, this is quite uh, formal for the numerical solution for the uh, water wave scattering. However, this kind of problem, when we consider the, uh, the velocity potential solution, the, the, the solution, the, uh, the solution expression does not satisfy the bottom bound conversion. So sometimes the conversion are slow. So that they are also scholars, they uh, develop the, the CCMS, the consider, consistent coupled mode system to improve the, the computational accuracy. And in, on the other hand, there is also the so-called the method, of, uh, the direct eigenfunction measure method. Actually, they got two kind of eigenfunction methods. The, the, the direct one and the, the indirect one. Sometimes the indirect one is also called the, the variational formation. And basically the eigenfunction measure method, or some, some people say that's the eigenfunction expansion method are good for a complex physical problem and they usually are used as a analytical solution for simple geometry like a rectangular uh, breakwater or rectangular 14 structure <clears throat> or a, si a single step, something like that. And then in my study in about this recent 10 or more years, I try to extend the, the EMM to become a numerical method to study the variable button. This idea was uh, originate to the in, in 1988, and some study, they make further comp comparison between the EMM and the, the, the minor stop uh -huh. equation in 1993 and the, the 2011 yeah. by, by myself. Yeah. Then after that, I extended the method to Fiskars wave and to the the uh, tension leg or the surface piercing structure and also to, to the porous break water. And then 
I also extended the method to a uh, to consider wave scattering by a thin barrier, including the impermeable and the permeable thin barrier, and also to consider the breaking and dis dispersion of waves. <clears throat> so I have made a detailed comparison between the MSE and the EMM. Basically, the MSE and the EMM, the accuracy are comparable. That means they have similar accuracy. And the e efficiency is, uh, are actually very similar because both of them resulted in a sparse uh, system matrix. But the advantage of MSE is that the, the button are assumed to be continuous and it can be easier extend to time dependent problem and to the general uh, three dimensional problem. And for the EMM, the advantage is that there's only two coefficient required for uh, on one shelf. And the, the formulation are easier and also easier for complicated system. The cons are that the, the, the button are, uh, are by step so that some, sometimes uh, if the button variation are very uh, repeat, then that got some pop, uh, not, probably not uh, that good. Okay. And right now the myosophy question are really mature. However, the EMM are limited to uh, some specific problem. I think in the future, the, the MSE should be applied to complex wave system. Okay, it's tend to complex wave system. And the EMM should be extended to a three dimensional problem. <clears throat> so we consider the, the problem of water wave scattering and the, by over a variable button, like the solid that right here. And we approximate the button by uh, this uh, dashed step. So that a over each step, we have uh, eigenfunction solution of the waves. And then we connect the solution over the, the, the step by the physical law of the, uh, the say the conservation of mass and the conservation of momentum so that the solution can be uh, obtained. So the problem is very straightforward. We have a, 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 continue, a variable button and on the left most uh, we have a third button and on the right most uh, we also have a third button so that the, the, the geometry is something like this and we have the governing equation is the Laplace equation we have a free service condition uh, both the dynamic of dynamic and the free service bundling condition and we also have the button condition and uh, we have the far field condition. And then we make the step approximation. So over each step, we have the dispersion relation. This is quite formal so that I, I, will, uh, I will go first. And we also have the FNSM mode. Now we try to uh, uh, approximate the the button condition. Okay, so so the button condition we have two parts. One is the horizontal part. We have no penetration condition. It's equation one point nine, and the equation one point ten. We have the non penetration condition on the, the vertical wall, and above the step we have the conservation of mass and momentum. That's one point eleven, one point twelve, and then we we have the solution expression like this. And just formally, we have the, the eigenfunction solution. So our eigenfunction solution looks something like this. So we have this uh, uh, depth function. Okay, it's a function of, uh, of y, okay, something like this. So that this uh, eigenfunction automatically satisfies the free service condition, the button condition and the depth, the, the connection condition, okay, the conservation of mass and the cons conservation of, of momentum. 
and also the connection condition for the for the side word. Okay, actually these three conditions are not satisfied. So we use the Gherkin method to connect uh, the condition. Okay, so uh, because right here we have, we actually have three conditions, so that we use uh, the the weighted residual method that the first condition okay become the conservation of uh, momentum. This one is de described by by this equation, okay. And also the 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 second two equation, the the second and third equation. This equation are combined to become this. This is the conservation of mass. And eventually we, we divide the inner product between this uh, uh, depth eigen function. So uh, because data I will consider different kind of problems, actually about five, five or six different configuration. But please remember that all of the problem resulted in the same type of equation, say the equation one point, uh, equation 16 and equation 17, this is two equation. The difference is that the, the inner product are different and the, the, the eigenfunction are different for different physical problem. And the, sometimes if they got structure, then we also have the, the equation of motion to, to go into the, the equation. Okay, this is, is the, the, the general situation. And if we want to consider the, the breaking and dissipation, this is very important. If, if we are doing the, uh, the engineering design so that we need to have quick evaluation of the, the wave uh, transformation, and we need to consider the energy dissipation or the, en or the wave breaking phenomena. And uh, we just uh, used the idea that was used in the myostropic equation by different authors so that we, we have the eff effective wave number by the energy dissipation factor FD. Okay, so we, we, we convert the, the propagating eigen, sorry, the, the propagating wave number into the eff effective wave number that considering the effect of wave breaking and the dissipation. And this FD, we usually uh, evaluate by some empirical uh, formulations. And the, when doing so, we also need to have the surface elevation, the solution expression for the surface elevation, something like this, so that we replace the propagating mode by this two, okay? We replace the K head to the K bar so that the, the uh, dissipation effect can be considered. And in addition, we usually have, when we consider the the wave breaking, we usually consider the effect of the shoreline. And we approximate the shoreline by, by a partially reflecting vertical wall so that uh, we, we need to replace the, the transmission wave by a partial reflecting uh, wall. So we have this formulation. So that the rightmost five year condition is replaced by the EMA equation uh, by this one. So we have this uh, partial reflecting coefficient. And also we have the non dimensional wave force, okay, by the, uh, this equation. And previously we, we are talking about the, the energy dissipation factor. So the energy dissipation factor we, we approximate by some traditional formula. Of course, uh, more recent refined formulation are possible uh, to use. These formulation are quite practical uh, and was obtained from the uh, uh, exper experimental data. Although the equation looks you know, not very precise in a mathematical field point, but actually the, the per performance of the method is quite good. And we compare our result with several experimental 
result. Uh, good agreements can be found. Then I extend the problem to consider if we, we have the permeable or impermeable breakwater. So in, in this problem, the, the connection condition need to be changed because right now we have a, a barrier, okay? For this case, I consider this is the impermeable thin barrier, vertical barrier. So if you, you see the problem, you will see that there is totally is one, two, three, four, five. There is totally five equation on this uh, step, okay? Um, at the S equal to S, um, they got totally actually five equation. <coughs> and we need to use the Gherkin method to convert this five equation to become two so that they, there is no need to use the least square method. And if, if we observe this equation, basically uh, you can see that the equation 2.2, this is conservation of uh, mass. And the equation 2.3 is similar, also the conservation of mass. And the equation 2.4 is the uh, sidewall condition. So these conditions are actually the same as the previous one. Now we have additional new equation. This is the, uh, this pressure equation is the same, but we have this additional equation. Okay, so we need to uh, Im impose this uh, condition into the, the pressure condition. <coughs> and I, in, in uh, this subsection, okay, I also consider the oblique incidence so that I have uh, to follow the snail rule. Uh, we have the, 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 the momentum conservation in the y direction, okay? And the, the s, s direction is the wave direction, z is the vertical direction. <coughs> so we, we use the snare laws to, uh, to, to connect the, the condition so that we have a little bit of modification. And eventually we have uh, some very, you see for the conservation of for the conservation of mass the equation are exactly the same okay the integral goes to the when i define this uh, inner product the integral are according to the first eigenfunction the g1 okay g1 corresponding to h1 so for the conservation of mass the integral go, goes into the the, the water depths of left and the right uh, water depths. And uh, then we consider the, the conservation of momentum. Okay, we, we just want to use a similar formulation, just like the, there is no same barrier. And then we add a new term to balance the solution. Okay, so this new term is called the F. Uh, and here, right here, we, we, we consider the the, the eigenfunction for the smaller part. The smaller part means that, for example, in, in figure A, the smaller part is the right-hand side. Okay, figure B also similar, the, the, the right-hand side, the, the depth function right-hand side. So that uh, for the conservation mass, the inner product was uh, taken for the, the, the smaller eigenfunction so that we can extend uh, our solution. So this is a simple extension that we don't need uh, something like the, this, this square. Some scholar, they use this square to, for this kind of problem, but we don't need. And uh, also, if the F is equal to zero, the solution degenerates to the situation without same barrier. So this become an extension, okay? Not a new solution, it's actually all the solutions are in one formulation and one uh, generic code. Okay, so eventually we have uh, some solution like this. So you can see the, the EMM equation are these two equations and we have this additional term. And also I consider the situation that if we have a, a structure, 
Okay, right here, I only, I, in, in this formulation, I consider only the search motion. But basically, we, we can only, we can also consider the heat motion and the, the low motion and others. But right here, I only consider the, 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 the search motion. So we have a variable structure, okay. Here the variable structure means a structure of a general shape, okay. And also a variable button, okay. And we want to try, try to find the solution. So our equation are just very similar, but right here we, uh, we right now we have two depths, okay. Right now, because Previously, we only have water depths, but right now we, we have the total depths and also we have the depths of structure. So that we have additional, we have D, okay, D, um, this is the, the depths of the structure. So that we have additional, we have the button condition of the, the service piercing structure, okay, like this. And the, uh, we have this uh, side, side wall condition, okay. This condition is the, the, actually the condition right here. So we have additional this condition and this condition for the structure. So that's corresponding to this uh, point 0.5 and 3.10. And we have uh, all others very similar. So the only difference is that when D equal to zero, okay, sorry, I'm sorry. If D is not equal to zero, then we have structure. Then, then the wave number should be changed to here. Okay. And uh, correspondingly, we, the depth eigenfunction also can be changed. Okay, we need to consider if the, the K head equal to zero, then we, we need to have, uh, have this uh, vertical uh, horizontal eigenfunction need to be changed a little bit. And all the other parts are actually the same. And uh, we, we need to consider the, the conservation of mass and conservation of momentum. For the conservation of mom momentum, right now we change to the, the inner part, okay? If you, you observe here, then the, the pressure, pressure uh, conservation are only in this interval, okay? In the inner part, okay? So, so, so the, the products are, are, are operate on the inner parts. And for the, for the conservation of mass, in addition to this equation, we also have these two sidewall equations. So that the integral are go go into the the individual water uh, interval. Okay, for the left hand side, the interval are goes on this interval, and the right hand side on this interval. But to make this connect connected, so we need to multiply by the outer part of eigen function. So it's actually the outer part is, uh, I'm sorry, the outer part is this. Okay. That means the smaller D and the, the bigger H, okay, the outer part. Okay, so by this little modification, the powering is tended to the, the wave structure interaction. So the previous uh, uh, formulation are good for all these uh, eight different configurations. And also the study was, was extended to consider the viscous wave over variable button. Okay, I have uh, actually published about three publications in different uh, articles. So in this situation, we consider uh, three-dimensional Stoss through uh, Stoss equation as the governing equation. We have one uh, continuity equation and three equation for the, uh, for the momentum equation in three different directions. And we, we may got some uh, uh, difficult because, because in this situation, the, the governing equation requires 
more boundary condition than the previous case. The previous case is the invisible food. So that if we want to make the solution can be degenerate to the invisible case, then we need some treatment on the condition, either on the free service and on the button. So we make a, we make some uh, some special assumption on this uh, condition. A on the free service, okay. We consider, uh, we we follow the, the work of Chen. Okay, Chen is the, the first president of National uh, Science and University. So he he have had a hypothesis of the weak viscous wave. Okay, we follow that so that we have uh, this, we have uh, the, the so-called viscous Bernoulli equation. So we use the viscous Bernoulli condition on the free service. That means the horizontal vorticity are uh, disappeared. All the horizontal vorticity are very small. Okay, we use this condition. And also the continuity of pressure. That's it. The continuity of pressure was, was used also for invisible fluid. But for this, okay, this is the vorticity uh, free condition, horizontal for this view condition. These two, two conditions are uh, specifically used in this study. And also the, the kinematic condition like this. And on the bottom, we have the, of course, non-penetration condition. And we also have a, a sleeping condition. Okay, this is followed by a, a, a traditional study by them. So in this way, the, the the solution presented right here for the viscous wave can be degenerated to the viscous, to the invisible problem. And we make some uh, oblique transform so that the solution can be expressed uh, from the two horizontal direction to the one horizontal direction. And the solution expression uh, uh, is expressed by this equation. This is actually is very crucial points uh, in the, application of the, 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 the EMM because I find that no matter what is the, the solution, the, the, the eigenfunction can be expressed by this form, okay, the expon uh, of exponential form with some constant so that this constant can be obtained either analytically or numerically. And then uh, integral can be performed analytically. So that we have this uh, uh, coefficient. Okay, and also we have the dispersion relation is a little bit complicated. So this, this dispersion relation, we have considered the viscosity and the, the, actually the surface tension. Okay, in and it's very important that this dispersion relation can be degenerate. Okay, so right now we, we have a additional surface tension and we have viscosity, so that if the viscosity are disappeared, then we this solution degenerate into the, the previous one, and also if fi are disappeared, okay, fi is the, the sleeping condition on the button. So this is spatial configuration suitable for weak viscous wave. Okay, not, not for intensive viscous wave. And then we eventually we have uh, this solution. So the solution is actually very similar to the previous one. And we have the eigenfunction for velocity and for the the pressure, so we can make some uh, some extension of the method, and uh, finally we have uh, we have divided this uh, inner products. So it's very important that the inner products can be uh, performed because 
we have a push, we have expressed our eigenfunction by this form. It's actually some constant, some exponential fun function, so that all this can be uh, expressed and analytically. <coughs> And then I also consider the application of the problem to uh, to porous breakwater. Okay, if we, if we have a porous layer right here, actually this solution can can be extended to the multiple porous layer. So if some of the audience you are interested in this kind of method, you can contact me. I actually have all kind of uh, have the solution of all kind of problem for multiple layers of the the porous structure. So if you are interested, then you can contact me. I can I can share my study with you so that you can go for some study. So in this case, we have a, a, a water depth is D1 and we have a total depth is H1. Similar to the, the, the structure case, okay? The 14 structure case, we have two, two depths. And uh, we have uh, when, okay, when D is equal to H, then we have no porous break water. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, if D equals zero, then the break water is sub, sub area. Okay, so we have, the solution can be adapted to different configurations. So similarly, we have the coupling equation. This is a parallel equation. And we have the kinematic and the dynamic free surface condition. And for the porous layer, a very similar, we define the, sip, the discharge velocity by this formulation. So this is a little bit different. Some study in the literature may, may use different definition of the velocity so that uh, the solution can be uh, connected or the, in, in the interface between the upper water layer and the lower porous layer. That was the continuity of the velocity. Okay, actually it's the continuity of the discharge velocity with the fluid velocity on the upper layer. And also the, the condition for the pressure. And also we have a button condition like this. And, and right here, we need to define the, the, the pressure and we use, we use the, the, equal, uh, the, the Bernoulli equation, okay? For the porous layer and for the water layer. So we ignore the high order nonlinear term. And if we consider then we, we use the equilibrium, equilibrium of work so that we have a linearized, uh, fission coefficient and the inertial turn like this. And so finally, the, the continuity of, of pressure, okay, become this. So, so the difference between uh, the pure water wave is that we need to divide it, the discharge velocity potential by delta to become the pressure of porous layer. So the data have involved some constant and then we have uh, this condition. And also we require some connection condition between two, two shelf. So finally we can divide this uh, data operator to the, the pressure so that the data operator is divided that if there is pure water, then we, that is its identity. And if they got a porous layer, then it need to be divided by data. Okay. So after this, all the other parts are just very similar. And also we have, uh, in because we have porous structure so that our solution the, the eigenfunction are more complicated. So we all also express the solution by these exponential functions, okay, by this equation. So actually I obtained this coefficient alpha and the beta, okay, by numerical method. And this K 
also by numerical method, by this, this is a dispersion relation. So that the dispersion relation becomes a, 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 a determination of uh, this matrix. So we have a matrix form. And by this formulation, the problem can be extended to uh, multiple layers of problems. And this, this relation degenerate to water wave, okay? If E equal to H and to all the other conditions situation. And, uh, and then we can numerically solve this coefficient. So this is very important. <coughs> the dispersion relation and the, the coefficient of the solution expression are solved numerically, okay? We don't solve that analytically. And then after that, the solution are connected analytically. So consider the connection of two step, okay? Some configuration like this. So we need to have the, uh, uh, have the, the EMM equation. So the, the, the momentum conservation actually become this. So we have this data operator. Okay, the conservation of mass are, are not changed. Okay, so eventually we have exactly the same equation. The only difference is that the inner product, the, the definition of inner product become this, okay? So we need to take this data up, operation in the inner product, okay? So that the, the, the solution changed to the porous case. And this formulation are suitable for these six, six different uh, situation. Use a single equation, okay. And also I consider the wave breaking. Okay, this is this is similar to previous one, so I ignore it. And all these different configuration even uh, either have a structure or have a porous breakwater or a thin barrier or the viscous wave or water wave invisible or, or invisible wave. All of these are put in one uh, generic code, okay, the EMN generic code. So because basically we have different component for this uh, 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 solution. We have a dispersion relation for the to obtain the, the uh, to obtain the, the wave numbers, the propagating wave number and, and the evanescent wave number. Later I will also is con also consider if they got diff uh, multiple propagating wave number. Okay. And also we we have uh, need to obtain the EMA equation, okay, by this. So when doing this, we need to have an inner product. So to, by doing this inner product, I need this, have a class for the integral. So basically, if you can produce the class for the dispersion and the, the class for the integral, then you can plug these two components into my code so that you can have a complete solution. <clears throat> So the first example, okay, because the time probably quite limited, so that I will I will give you some um, some important results. Okay, this is a very interesting result. I have uh, I have this this study in twenty fifteen. Uh, actually, I consider the the so called the low source curve the profile. The low source profile is the probably the unique solution, unique analytical solution for, for this problem. The profile is defined by the, uh, this formula. And I consider three different uh, uh, slope, okay. That was uh, uh, classified by the beta, okay. Beta is a, a, a parameter for, for the, the steepness. So the blue one is very mild, and for the the the, the sec second one, okay, beta equal to one is the, this one, okay. This is more steep, and for the the red one is very very steep. For this very steep case, okay, the, actually the maximum value of the beta goes to the pi over two. So I consider the the extreme case that the beta equal to one point five. Okay, so we have a very uh, 
big curvature right here. Okay, and for this problem, I solved the problem by, actually I, I solved it by three different solutions. Okay, one is by the CCMS. That is actually a minor slope equation, but based on the swing function. And also the traditional minor slope equation. I say this is the minor slope system. Okay, this is, this is the MSE based on the uh, velocity potential. And uh, in the list also the EMF, the, the method in this study. So you can see that in general, the accuracy of the um, MSE and the EMF, okay, are actually very, very similar, okay. If you consider, for example, 10 turn, then the solution goes to something like this. So this is very close to, very similar to this one. So, uh, uh, okay, a rough viewpoint, you can say that the, the accuracy of MSE and the EMM are about 10 to the minus four power, okay. And then I also consider the, the, the CCMS, the coupled mode system. So the accuracy goes to, uh, sometimes go to the minus six or to the, even the minus eight. So that's very accurate. But it's very interesting, okay? I consider this very extreme case, okay? The extreme case is this uh, red one, okay? So you can see that the solution of minor slope are actually no good, you see, because the minor slope, we assume that the slope is very mild, and then we, we, we derive the equation, say the minor slope equation, and then we numerical, numerically solve it. But the problem is we are not easy to, to approximate this point, okay? However, we, we solve the problem by the EMM, okay? So we, we just cut these two become, for example, the two step, okay? One step here, one step here, or more the 10 step, okay? We, we can uniformly cut these two to 10, uh, 10 shelf separated by step. So you can see that only 10 step, we already can obtain this very similar accuracy for this very extreme case. So this demonstrate that the, for some swing curvature, the, the EMM do have some advantage uh, by this example. Then I also, okay, this shows the comparison between the EMM and the, the MSE. And then I just give you some quick example about the other application, for example, with the, uh, the rectang rectangular Breakwater, okay, this is very formal. So I compare the solution with the result in the literature. And for the multiple breakwater, okay, with a vertical wall. And also I studied the, this, the variable button, okay. So usually by this case, uh, you can see that I have uh, 120 st uh, steps. So this is actually, just like a numerical solution, okay. It actually is, is, is very different from the, the so-called analytical solution. And I have studied this uh, very special situation right now in our university. We have some colleagues try to make, to conduct some experiment for this uh, situation, say the constructive break resonance. So we have a periodic report button, but in the list, we have a partially reflecting wall and they have a separation between this wall and the button. So we have put this, okay, to become some special distance, okay? And then we find that in this special situation, you know, the, the, the break resonant become uh, constructive with the partially reflecting, reflecting wall. And, and also for, for some special configuration, uh, actually I, I should mention that, uh,
actually if this is okay this p equal to one so this is 0 0.6 so actually this is 0 0.8 okay okay this is 0 0.8 and the incident wavelength for this result is actually uh, 1.6 okay so this is a quarter of the this a quarter of the instant wavelength, significant wavelength. In this situation, you know, the, the break resonant is constructive so that the wave force on this wall become minimal. So this study suggested that if you have an instant wave, then the, the ripple, the, 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 the structure, the distance of the structure should become half of the significant wavelength. And the separation should become one, one fourth, one fourth of the uh, the, the instant wavelength, so that the break resonance can be uh, constructive, and uh, the migration of the wave will be the best. And then I consider the, the wave breaking. Okay, this is very rare. Uh, this analytical solution for for wave breaking and this patient. So I have studied different uh, button slope, the slope of 110 and 120th. And uh, I have a sur surface elevation in different phase of the wave. So this is a, a ha harmonic assumption of wave breaking, the linear, the wave breaking based on the assumption of linear wave. This is a, a little bit uh, strange. But this gives a quick iteration for empirical use. And also I consider the, the uh, steep uh, slope and also this uh, composed slope. And in the list, I also consider the, the variable button. Okay, this is very famous in the literature. So you can see my result is actually performed quite good. Okay, this is the this is normalized by the breaking point and the the the, the misma or, or the the this is the the stiffness of the wave. So the result is actually quite good for this situation. Even we just approximate this by a linear wave, and then I also consider some sim barrier. Okay, multiple sim barrier over variable button. So this is a single surface piercing button and com I compared it. So this is a check of the, the uh, this is a check of the, different lengths of the barrier, okay. So the solution becomes like this. And also the, the enhanced the break resonance. So I have break resonance and then I put some barrier uh, on, the, on the free surface or, or in the button. So you can see that the surface piercing uh, seam barrier will block the short wave. Okay, later you will see you will see that more significantly. So you you can see uh, because the 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 right of the horizontal S is corresponding to short wave, so that because the short short wave are concentrated on the free surface, so if the barrier are put on the free surface. You can see right here, the, the effect are very strong. So that the high order resonance uh, become even stronger for the surface piercing, enhance the vertical resonance. And also I consider the different angle of the, the instant wave. Uh, so in this study, I extended to a the structure, floating structure, okay. So also compare with the, 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 the result in the literature and also 
uh, a variable button and in addition have a, a structure. So usually the, the scalar, they, they solve this by the minor slope and this by the eigenfunction and then they, they connect. But in my method, I basically solve all of them, okay, by the EMM, okay. And also for variable, uh, multiple 14 service PSC structure. And also for the, 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 the combined effect of the structure and the, the button. And also my study was extended to, to a tension leg structure. I also studied this by, you know, naturally I, I extend this study to, to become, you know, a multiple, okay, multiple 14 structure. So the arrow is the number of the, the 14 structure. And the study was also extended to a two viscous wave, okay. So I need to verify the assumption. Right before I introduce you the weak viscosity with viscous theory. Wait, weak viscous wave theory. So that I need to check, okay, the boundary layer, okay, the velocity profile of the boundary layer. So on the 14, on the first button and on the slope button. So I we check our solution with the experimental data. And then we make some study right here. I think this is for the for a change, unsymmetric change. And I consider different viscosity, either in visit the idea for or, the, or in my formation a pure water or some kind of uh, viscous fluid. So this one is very interesting. Okay. A, this is a symmetric change. So for this unsymmetric change, we find something very interesting. You see, for the tra transmission coefficient, we are expected that for the a higher viscosity, okay, for uh, actually for this, for the, for for this dash, okay, this dash line is high viscosity. We expected that the transmission coefficient should be smaller, right? But actually it's not, okay. For long wave, the, for longer wave, okay, K is small. You can see that the higher viscosity give a, a large transmission. It's quite interesting. And uh, we have verified this result with the, the commercial software, the flow 3D. And we find a similar trend. So that make our theory very interesting. And we also verify the, the free surface condition. Okay. So we find that the on the free surface, the fiscal, the vorticity is actually very small. So this verify the, the so-called the, the weak viscous hypothesis. And then I also study the, the porous breakwater. Okay, so this is a porous layer. So actually my, 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 you know, my solution, my implementation can be extended to a multiple porous uh, breakwater. And for variable breakwater, okay, I can compare this with the solution of minus over. Even the minus over are very rare for this problem because the, the implement, in implementation can sometimes, can sometimes be very difficult, yeah. And uh, also to consider the wave breaking and dissipation. Okay, by the, by this different configuration, and the the surface elevation uh, at different phase, and also the breaking of this uh, this uh, breakwater, and also for this. All these are compared with the numerical and the, the experimental results. So basically I have derived the EMM 
for solving water wave scattering by thin barrier and by surface piercing structure with and without tension X and the permeable or impermeable favorable break water. Okay. And the sum of the result are compared with the direct numerical direct simulation by commercial software for 3D. And the wave breaking and wave dispersion are, are included in the formulation. And I have a generic code for this implementation. And the sum com comparison between the minor slope and the, the EMM was made. So the future work will extend it to complex system like the two layer fluid and the elastic button, polar elastic button and current effect and the virtual gravity wave and two nonlinear wave and the two AC symmetric, two horizontal dimension public. So this is some of my uh, publication previously. And this is the group of members of very, thank you very much for Professor Pihera. He organized this, uh, this conference. So he's right now visiting uh, uh, National Taiwan Ocean University. And we have also have Dr. Gaya Sori, also from SRM University, and also Dr. Bame. Okay, he is from, from IIT Gawahati, and also some students from, uh, from, from China and uh, from Vienna, and some local students. So in addition to this, I, I have also have several different study. Okay, if you are interested to visit my lab or to, to have a, a, a overseas study to become a PhD or master's student, you are very welcome to con con contact me. So you, if you are also interested in study on some of my other paths, like this uh, uh, adaptive model, okay, this, the, the grid is moving with the time all this the, the marine ge geotechnics okay for the uh, uh, soil liquefaction okay all the, the ocean circulation modeling like this all the symbolic wave if you are, you are if you are interested in um, derived sun analytical solution for the linear wave then you are also welcome and I have also alternatively the the local and the global method for some couple system and for some uh, some uh, very general software to solve multiple different uh, engineering problems. So this is my talk. Many thanks. Thank you, sir. Participants, if you have any questions, you can ask. Participants, anyone? Okay, if there are no questions, uh, let me thank. Professor Chai for his wonderful presentation on this using EMM and comparing the results with MRC for solving water wave problem, wherein he has used variable water but wave breaking anticipation. I'm sure, sir, our students will be benefited by your talk. And uh, I could see in your team. One of a student of our college, Gayatri, and I'm very happy to see that also. Uh, thank you, sir, for your presentation. <laughs> yeah, you didn't mention her. She's our student. Yes, from yes, SRM yes University. Student. <laughs> okay. Very nice presentation, sir. Thank you so much. And you've you. done a very good work. Okay. You're given a wide applications and others. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, uh, thank, thank you, uh, thank you, Professor Sai. Now, uh, you can you stop your share, slide, slide sharing? We can take a photo. Okay, okay, sure, sure. So I, I need to close my slides. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay.
Siba, sir, on your camera. Siba, sir. Yes, sir. Just show to the participant. Professor Shahid, yes. Siba, sir. On your camera. Yes, sir. One second. Uh, Ma'am, you can take photo. Or uh, Siba, sir, can you take photo? Shiva sir, actually there's a Google tag. They have to use geo tag and take photos. He said he'll do it. Okay. I have taken screenshots. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Professor Sai. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you ma sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Jeng. Hi. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, yeah, uh, sorry for delay. Uh, because I under uh, I understand that you have time limit from six to seven, uh, okay. so yeah, please we'll manage see. and try to finish soon. Yeah. Okay. So Are your time please finish? Sure. Um, uh, no, 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 uh, Doctor uh, Jeng, yeah. one minute. Okay. Our chair person will introduce you. Okay. Okay. Just one minute. share my screen and uh, hopefully you can see my uh, slide now. Um, okay, so um, can you see my screen now? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So let me uh, stop my video. I mean, just to uh, save uh, the internet results. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. So very happy to have the opportunity to give a talk at the uh, International Workshop on Numerical and Analytical Techniques in Engineering Problems. And thank you for uh, your uh, introduction. Uh, yes, so um, yeah, 
So prior to delivering uh, my talk, I would like to uh, introduce Plymouth and our university a little bit, uh, just in case uh, some of you may have never heard of them before. Um, yeah, so um, Plymouth, uh, you can see, uh, is a port city in southwest England. So it is about uh, 300 kilometers away from London here. Uh, Plymouth is a well-known uh, Britain's ocean city. Uh, so University of Plymouth is very, very close to the coast. It's about 1.5 uh, kilometers from the sea. Uh, this figure shows a view of the sea uh, from our uh, campus. So these uh, buildings are uh, our campus. So my office is here. Uh, so this is a picture of the uh, University of Plymouth, this one. Uh, our university is a public research university. So there are three uh, faculties. Uh, each of them contains a number of uh, schools. Our school uh, is a school of engineering, computing, and mathematics. It uh, belongs to uh, the Faculty of Science and Engineering. Uh, the research areas in our school cover uh, civil uh, and coastal engineering, uh, mathematical science, et cetera. We have a series of uh, state-of-the-art uh, facilities, such, such like the, uh, the Coast Lab, uh, the High Performance uh, Computing Center, et cetera. Our research group is called Coast Engineering Research Group, uh, led by Professor Deborah Greaves who is a fellow of uh, the Royal Ac uh, Academy of Engineering in the UK. Uh, our, our research group is a leading team of coastal and uh, ocean engineering. We have experts in laboratory modeling, numerical modeling, and uh, theoretical uh, analysis. Our team is settled in marine building. So on the ground floor, uh, we have the coast lab. So this figure uh, shows the ocean basin in our lab. My research interests uh, have been focused on uh, marine hydrodynamics and hydroelastics. Uh, for example, the theoretical modeling of wave energy motors. So this figure shows uh, the free surface around a, a pair of uh, oscillating water columns along a breakwater. Uh, so this uh, animation shows uh, water wave in, uh, interaction with an array of uh, floating porous elastic plates. Uh, this is an uh, integration of flexible wheel energy converter uh, with, uh, with an offshore floating uh, solar energy farm. So I reported this work uh, last year in uh, our uh, conference. Uh, so this figure shows the uh, water, uh, water wave interaction with uh, metal material cylinders. So this is a metal material cylinder consisting of a large number of thin plates deployed in parallel. So, oh, okay, so now uh, let's go back to uh, today's talk. So the talk is uh, today uh, is divided into uh, two parts. So part one is uh, waves uh, scattering by an array of metal material cylinders. Uh, part two is uh, water wave interaction with an annular metal material cylinder. So both of them are related to uh, water wave interaction with metal material cylinders. Uh, let's start from part one. So part one is organized as follows. I will uh, introduce uh, very briefly the background uh, of, the, uh, of the work and the following four um, sections are uh, associated with the uh, development of a theoretic model. Then uh, model uh, validation and case studies will be uh, presented. And finally, conclusion. So, firstly, let me have a very brief introduction to uh, metamaterials. Uh, a metamaterial is, um, I mean, any metamaterial uh, engineered to have a property that is not found in naturally occurring materials. So, typically, uh, metamaterials achieve this by um, uh, possessing a microstructure so whose uh, large scale. So you can see it's significantly smaller than the um, 
character uh, characteristic length scale over which the uh, underlying field varies. So matte materials are normally um, composed of um, a host material with um, um, periodor uh, periodic uh, arrays or uh, inclusions. Uh, there are many inter interesting phenomena occurring with the application of matte materials, like uh, negative wave refraction, wave resonance, wave near trapping. Uh, in water waves, uh, matte materials uh, can be formed by an uh, by any uh, medium with structural elements smaller than the uh, anticipated range of wavelengths. So several years ago, uh, Porter he considered a particular uh, embodiment of water wave material, in which the material uh, the medium is uh, formed by a closely spaced arrays of thin vertical plates extending. Uh, through the uh, water depths. The two cases were uh, studied. So you can see uh, this figure uh, is a plate array uh, material of finite width. Um, at, uh, and uh, uh, in this figure of a metal material cylinder. Yeah. Uh, so a metal material cylinder could be the one uh, consider, uh, consisting of closely spaced thin parallel array of vertical plates the whose uh, lateral uh, edges form the outline or cylinder when viewed from uh, from the top from above. Uh, so this figure shows uh, the results. I mean, uh, wave interaction with a, a plate uh, array uh, material of finite ways. So it was reported that uh, a plate Array matte material of finite width can act as a negative refraction medium and uh, uh, matte material uh, wave shifter. So uh, waves come from the bottom left, and then uh, this, this, this part is the matte material, and then uh, uh, transform in that way. So you can see there's this uh, negative uh, refraction. So uh, these two figures shows the uh, instantaneous wave field over a wave with different wave number one and two propagating at a uh, theta uh, 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 yeah, 45 degrees. And this is the, um, the angle of the uh, plate deployment. Uh, so this figure uh, illustrates uh, typical results and shows the uh, instantaneous free surface for a cylinder uh, with radius um, one and uh, this instant wave direction uh, 45 degrees. So the wave number for these three so figures are uh, one, uh, 1 1.3 and 1.6. So the color scales differ in each plot and the maximum height of the wave field varies from uh, 0.5 to uh, 25 across the three plots. So you can see some interesting wave scattering phenomena by the material cylinder. Uh, our present work develops the uh, preliminary study of uh, Porter on cylinders and extends the theory in uh, two directions. So first, we consider multiple cylinders and the interaction between them. And uh, secondly, recognizing that uh, the assumed narrow fluid channels between the uh, I mean the closely uh, spaced place may lead to uh, viscous uh, damping but we include in our model an artificial linear damping mechanism added to the free surface uh, so uh, a global uh, coordinate system uh, all X, Y, Z is chosen with the mean free surface uh, uh, coinciding uh, with the, uh, I mean, uh, X, Y plate and X measured vertically upwards. So we took uh, a cylinder, so you can see that this is a cylinder L, uh, N, so uh, the radius is Rn, and uh, uh, it is composed of, uh, you can see, uh, uh, periodic, I mean, a lot number of, um, in infinitely thin vertical plates rotated through a, a clock 
wise angle to beta n relative to O n. Uh, so the so plane waves are propagating at an angle beta relative to the O x uh, axis. Uh, so they are incident on these uh, material cylinders. Uh, the fluid is allowed is allowed to flow in gaps between uh, adjacent uh, plates, and waves are supported by uh, the free surface. In addition to the uh, global uh, coordinate system, the local the local one we can see O n x n prime y n prime x is also adopted so with uh, O n x and prime uh, in parallel with the uh, plates. So they, uh, they, the effect of, the, uh, of these plates allows waves to propagate in, um, in the um, uh, O, X, and prime uh, direction. Uh, moreover, so N uh, cylindrical coordinate systems are introduced. Uh, to study the wave scattering problem, a theoretical model is uh, proposed based on the linear potential flow theory. So we assume that the, the waves, I mean, the, the wave amplitudes are small, and we make the uh, usual assumptions that the fluid is uh, inviscid, incompressible, and its motion is um, uh, irrotational. Uh, so you can see the time uh, independent spe uh, special velocity potential uh, phi here. Uh, satisfied the last equation uh, over the fluid domain. Uh, I mean, uh, mainly outside the, uh, the cylinders, because uh, inside the cylinder, we, uh, it should satisfy the reduced, uh, reduced last equation. Um, it should also satisfy the boundary conditions at the seabed, uh, at uh, the free surface. So within the uh, cylinders, uh, so uh, uh, between the place we allow for the possibility of energy dissipation. So we employ the uh, modified free surface condition so with uh, V bar uh, uh, equal or larger than zero with, within the cylinder as a means of, means of achieving this to consider the uh, wave energy dissipation due to the uh, damping. Uh, the fluid domain, uh, you can see that it can be divided into uh, uh, exterior domain outside the cylinders and the uh, interior domain inside the cylinders. Uh, the spatial velocity potential in different domains uh, have different expressions. In the uh, exterior domain, so it can be expressed at this equation, so in which uh, phi i represents the um, incident wave with uh, velocity potential. And uh, A is uh, are the uh, unknown coefficients to be determined. So H is the uh, Hankel function uh, in which KL um, are the, um, uh, the roots of the uh, dispersion uh, relation in open water that is uh, well known. And yeah. So, the so, uh, special velocity potential in the uh, in, in uh, interior of the domain can be expressed in the local coordinate system. So O, uh, I mean O and uh, X and prime, Y and prime, and C. Uh, so here Y are the vertical uh, agent functions, and this is the expression. And K prime uh, are the uh, complex roots of, of the dispersion relation for the uh, interior. Uh, domains. So B and C here, they are unknown functions. So actually, uh, they can be written uh, this line. So uh, E and F here are actually the same coefficients. I mean, as a, but they are written as a function uh, in terms of uh, C and prime. So what does C and prime mean? So you can see um, in this figure. So uh, uh, so uh, along this channel, uh, the channel uh, intersects with the circular edge at P prime point. So uh, C prime means uh, represents the angle of uh, O n uh, P prime relative to uh, O x axis. Uh, yeah. So uh, this 
two equations express uh, the fact that the channels between the plates connect the uh, cylindrical surface uh, this side to this side. So uh, we can, uh, based on these two equations, we can uh, we may expand uh, expand uh, E and F in this uh, kind of a uh, uh, Kind of, uh, 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 submission. So, I mean, we, we can expand the functions of E and F in these expressions. So, where E and uh, F are unknown coefficients to be determined. Uh, so, the velocity and pressure continuity conditions at the uh, interfaces between the interior and the exterior regions can be used to determine the uh, unknown coefficients a, b, e, and f. And this slide shows how to evaluate the water uh, elevation and far field getting amplitudes. Um, the energy dissipated by the material cylinders due to uh, damping coefficient can be calculated uh, in two ways. So this is the first uh, way. So where omega n represents the water surface of the uh, interior domain occupied by uh, the n's cylinder. And here, eta denotes the time independent surface elevation. So this is kind of a straightforward way to calculate the energy dissipation by the cylinders. We call it the direct method. Uh, from the view of energy identities, I mean, energy uh, conservation, uh, the energy uh, dissipated by the cylinders can also be uh, evaluated based on the uh, spatial potentials in the uh, uh, exterior domain. So in, um, the image here, so HR is the uh, coaching function. Uh, it can be uh, expressed in terms of uh, A. So, uh, we call this method uh, the indirect method. Uh, so here uh, at this is the non-dimensionalized version of the wave power uh, dissipation. So here P U is the uh, incident wave power. Uh, for the case without any uh, without any uh, damping effect, when waves propagate into the cylinders with a place aligned to the incident wave direction, the incident uh, waves would not, uh, I mean, would not be um, affected at all. So this can be seen from uh, this figure. So this is the wave incident uh, direction. Uh, the plate is aligned in, in the same uh, directions. So you see there is no wave uh, scattering at all as expected. So when the two uh, material cylinders they are uh, deployed far away from each other, the wave motion at each cylinder uh, is expected to be the same as that for an isolated single material cylinder. Uh, the bottom three figures here illustrate the uh, instantaneous wave field around one or um, a pair of material cylinders far apart from one another. So you can see the present results found to agree well uh, with uh, those for a single material cylinder as demonstrated by uh, Poser. Uh, another extreme case is that uh, um, one uh, damping coefficient is extremely large, very, very large. So wave motion uh, on the surface of the uh, internal region is uh, strictly restricted and the wave scattering problem becomes the same uh, for the material cylinder with a fixed solid lead at the main uh, water surface. So in, indeed, this can be observed in, um, in the top figures. Uh, additionally, the wave power, wave power dissipated by the uh, cylinders evaluated by using uh, the direct methods and indirect methods are presented in the uh, bottom figures. So you can see the they agree uh, very well with uh, one another. So moreover, the potential flow theory based on uh, numerical 
uh, simulations are carried out with the employment uh, of uh, commercial boundary element methods tools uh, on this aqua so to study the wave interaction with the uh, metal material cylinder uh, consisting of uh, 20 vertical plates you can see in this figure. Uh, so figure B shows the numerical results and this uh, figure C is the analytical ones. So uh, you can see the, uh, the goods agreement so, uh, between the, so it uh, gives up uh, confidence in our uh, spherical model. Uh, yeah. Uh, prior to uh, investigating performance of a pair of mathematical cylinders, uh, the angle re uh, responses of the uh, scattered far field amplitude for a single mathematical cylinder placed with the uh, place alignment angle phase one uh, ranging uh, from zero to uh, 90 degrees are plotted in this figure. So uh, in all these figures, uh, instant wave direction is uh, 90 degrees. The different subfigures denote different values for the damping coefficients. So from, from left left hand side to the right hand side. So uh, this, this figure no damping, but this figure um, the non-dimensional damping coefficient is 0 0.1. And in this figure you can see we have very large uh, uh, large uh, damping coefficient. Uh, different curves represents the metal material cylinder with different plate alignment directions. Uh, from the non-damping situation as shown in, uh, in this figure, the main peak, the main peak value of the uh, far field scattering uh, amplitude uh, decreases uh, with the increase of the uh, uh, of, of this angle with one as uh, so the corresponding angle uh, Set, uh, I mean, set zero uh, decreases with the, uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah. So, I mean, the peak value decreases with the increases uh, of the uh, bit one, and the corresponding uh, position uh, set zero uh, in, uh, increases. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, this, uh, the peak. Position is uh, almost uh, 90 degrees larger than base one. So you see uh, the solid curve of base one is zero, and you can see the peak position is around 90 degrees. And in this case, uh, that is uh, 30 degrees plus 90 degrees, something like that. So this means the cylinder bends or re redirects a, a beam of energy in the direction uh, perpendicular to the plate direction. Uh, the same thing still uh, roughly uh, happens so, uh, for this uh, in this figure for uh, 0 0.1 and damping coefficient. However, when the damping is too large, that it, it works like a kind of solid lead placed on the free surface of the uh, cylinder, uh, the angle response of the uh, scattered far field amplitude is uh, likely dependent on bit one. So that. Uh, indicates that the uh, orientation of the place is, is relatively unimportant um, as far as the overall effect of the cylinder is on uh, wave direction. Okay, so this figure presents the near field wave motion due to incidence wave wave propagating from uh, bottom to the top on a pair of uh, material cylinders without any damping. So the Top line figures plus the wave amplitude. The bottom line shows uh, instantaneous wave field. The two metal material cylinders have uh, identical uh, radius, while uh, the same plates that uh, comprise the two cylinders are opposite to each other. That means uh, bit, uh, bit two equals to minus bit one. So uh, one, uh, one bit one uh, equals to 90 degrees. So the waves just pass through the cylinders, right? Without any uh, wave scattering. So you can see from these two figures. But for other values of bit one, 
the waves, uh, I mean, um, what, uh, uh, you, you can see some very, I mean, very uh, obvious uh, interaction between waves and the uh, cylinders. Uh, compared to the uh, wave world surface elevation, the wave motion at uh, the Lee world's region and close to the uh, cylinders is more affected by those uh, two cylinders. Um, for the cases uh, with uh, H1 equaling to uh, minus 30 degrees, so uh, these two figures, so you can see there is a wave focusing uh, region at the central leeward region of the array here, here. And the waves in the region is focused with amplitudes, I mean, more uh, larger than 2.0. Uh, as a comparison, uh, when the uh, for the material cylinders with uh, bit one uh, equaling to uh, 30 degrees, as shown in these two figures, so there is a large uh, area for smaller wave amplitude which is smaller than 0.4 at the very uh, levels of the array where uh, the waves are effect, uh, effectively blocked by the two cylinders so the incident wave can be uh, complete completely blocked blocked at uh, some uh, specified point here and here uh, so the dramatic uh, uh, amplification uh, Amplification and focusing effect on wave motion uh, inside the uh, cylinders are observed for all the cases except for this case, when phase one equals to 90 degrees. Uh, the results as given uh, in this figure demonstrate that uh, uh, wave focusing and wave blocking can be achieved by a, uh, by a parallel uh, material cylinders with the uh, appropriate control of the plate uh, alignment direction. Uh, so uh, the near field wave motion due to the same instant wave waves propagating on the same uh, material cylinders with, uh, uh, with uh, PTO damping at the value 0 0.1 uh, presented in this uh, figure. So the previous uh, amplification and focusing effects on wave motion inside the uh, material cylinders are now significantly uh, weakened uh, due to the, uh, the damping effect, um, uh, except the one with uh, beta one according to 90 degrees. So, you know, due to the existence of damping, the incident waves now uh, is uh, disturbed by the material cylinders uh, for this case. Although the effect is uh, uh, very limited or very, very little. Uh, this figure uh, illustrates the near field wave motion when an extremely large damping is employed, so which is uh, equivalent to a solid lead placed on the surface uh, inside each cylinder. So when, uh, when the solid lead is put on the surface, it largely produces the same uh, overall wave pattern. Uh, this figure demonstrates how the energy dissipated by the cylinders with different plate alignments uh, varies with um, damping and incident wave direct, uh, direction. Uh, so in this figure, as you can see, as the damping coefficient uh, uh, V bar increases from zero, uh, the wave power dissipation first increases and then decreases after reaching uh, the maximum wave power dissipation. Uh, the corresponding optimized uh, wave bar varies for the material cylinders with different uh, values of uh, weight one. So you can see the peak positions uh, move. Uh, as shown in figure B, the energy dissipated is found to be significantly uh, dependent upon wave incident direction uh, beta. And, uh, and also the, the plate uh, alignment direction bit one. Uh, it should be noted that the metamaterial cylinders may be, may be uh, utilized to capture wave energy if the channels are filled with uh, floating buoys extracting power in heave. For a traditional wave energy converter, 
consisting of an axiometric rigid cylinder moving in heel mode in heel motion in heel mode it has a maximum wave power capture factor one uh, i mean the, the max theoretically uh, the maximum uh wave power capture uh, factor is one for a heaving uh, cylinder uh, the presence uh, I mean, a parallel multiple two cylinders are found to give uh, at this larger than two over a large, I mean, a wide range of conditions. They can absorb more than two, I mean, more than two non interacting heaving cylinders can ever get. So this indicates that the multiple two cylinders have a profound potential for wave power extraction. Okay, so uh, some uh, brief conclusions. So we proposed a theoretical model to study the uh, wave scattering uh, problem with an uh, array of multi material cylinders. So we found that a, thin, a single cylinder can act as a lens drawing in and uh, emitting a beam of intense wave energy in the direction perpendicular to the plates. Uh, wave focusing and wave blocking can be achieved by a pair of uh, material cylinders. Uh, the multi material cylinders have uh, pro uh, have great potential for wave power extraction. So for more discussions, please refer to our paper published in uh, JFM uh, in 2020. Uh, we have also considered a truncated material cylinder, and that work was published in Proceeding A for Royal Society. So now let's move on to part two, uh, water wave interaction with an annular multiple two cylinder. So as you can see, the structure of part two is very, very similar to part one. So in this part, uh, um, we do not consider any uh, damping effect. Uh, the background, uh, a couple of years ago, an annular region of multiple two, so which consists of a gradient depth, uh, Water, uh, I mean, separated by a series of radial plates. Uh, so they, they can be uh, used to uh, manipulate water waves. And that, uh, this kind of stuff was uh, examined in the, uh, in the, in the lab. So they, uh, some researchers they did some physical modeling for this kind of stuff. And uh, uh, the concentrating and the invisible effect of this kind of device was confirmed both numerically and ex uh, experimentally. But uh, to the best of our knowledge, a more fundamental problem that is, I mean, uh, wave interaction with an annular uh, metal material cylinder consisting of a radio thin place uh, placed in water of constant depths has never been uh, investigated and well understood yet. So our following work is then focused on this special case. Uh, so you can see R, I, and R denote the uh, in, inner and outer radius of the annular cylinder. The cylinder is composed of um, uh, an array of thin vertical plates aligned with the radial direction. Uh, again, a linear potential flow theory based model is developed to investigate the problem. Um, okay, this is Laplace equation, and this is the reduced Laplace equation uh, inside the annular ring. And um, of course, the boundary conditions at the seabed and free surface should be satisfied. Uh, we divide the fluid domain into three regions, the uh, exterior domain outside the cylinder, the annular ring-shaped domain, and the uh, interior region enclosed by the annular ring domain. Uh, the special velocity potentials in different domains have different uh, expressions. And this is the uh, expression um, in the uh, exterior domain. It's very, very similar uh, to the, I mean, part one. And uh, yeah. so this is the uh, expression of the velocity potential in the uh, interior domain here. Uh, B, is the, uh, B are the unknown coefficients to be determined. Uh, the special velocity potential in the annular ring domain can be extracted uh, in this uh, equation. Um, yeah, 
So, um, so this this uh, will not potential should satisfy the uh, reduced Laplace equation first. So in this uh, equation, um, d and d are unknown coefficients to be determined. Uh, the Bessel function j and the Newman function y, you can see the order is zero. So that is because they need to satisfy uh, this reduced uh, Laplace equation. Um, yeah, and the continuity conditions in uh, pressure and flux across the interfaces between the three domains should be satisfied. And those continuity uh, conditions result in this matrix equation uh, with which the unknown coefficients A, B, C, D can be determined. Um, so once the velocity potential is known, so we can then evaluate the wave elevation and uh, the wave, uh, I mean, far field scattering amplitude, AS. Uh, so following uh, Molin's method in uh, evaluating the gap resonance by two side-by-side -side parties, we can impose the uh, uh, homogeneous uh, direct, uh, direct light type condition at the open ends of the channel to evaluate the resonance within the uh, within the uh, metamaterial ring, and it gives us these two equations. Uh, to have a non-trivial solution of C and D, uh, the determinant of the uh, coefficient matrix should be zero. So we have this equation. So here kj denotes the, uh, the j's root of this equation. And it is uh, associated with the j's resonant frequency. Um, so this slide presents the, the counter of the uh, free surface amplitude for, uh, for these three resonant frequencies. We have four figures rather than three. Uh, figures B, C, D uh, are the analytical results of these three uh, wave conditions. And figure A is the numerical results for the first uh, resonant frequency. In, in our numerical simulation, the annular metamaterial cylinder is composed of 120 uh, uh, infinitely thin vertical plates aligned uh, with the radial direction and uniformly distributed over the circular direction. So this uh, comparison between uh, figures A and B is kind of validation of our model. Uh, so this figure shows the frequency response for the far field skirting uh, coefficient at set uh, um, equaling to zero and equaling to, to pi. So uh, the blue, the blue solid curve and the red dash curve correspond to the back skirting and forward skirting, respectively. Uh, the green dash, dashed lines correspond to the resonant frequencies. So we demonstrate that uh, there can be hardly any back uh, skirting for a wide range of wave frequencies. So you can see the um, the blue solid curve. Uh, the near non-bike uh, non -bike skirting generally happens around the predicted resonant frequencies. So this part, this part, this part. So you can see in this figure there are almost no bike uh, backward uh, skirting. Uh, okay. So uh, the forward skirting coefficients uh, presence on um, overall step shaped group, uh, growth with the increasing uh, wave number. So you can see the red uh, curved, uh, uh, red uh, dashed curve. Uh, there are a series of spikes observed on the, on the curves of uh, AS. So this is, uh, you, you can zoom in and you can see the um, sharp. Uh, they happened around day uh, four, four point two. Yeah. Uh, 
the kind of clusters. So the, the first cluster have, happens around four, the second one happens around nine, and this third one around um, uh, 16. So we've, we've been very interested in this kind of spikes. So we select four spikes as examples and plot the corresponding instantaneous uh, free surface. So interestingly, we found that uh, there are six peaks and six troughs over the annular ring domain in figure one. So this, peak, this uh, corresponds to uh, this condition here, this one, 3.8, uh, 8. And in figure seven, so this is the uh, wave number corresponds to this spike, and this figure is one, and this figure is this one. Uh, so in the second figure, we can see seven uh, peaks and seven troughs. In figures C and D, the number in, uh, increases to eight and nine, respectively. So we are wondering if this phenomenon could be related to the near uh, wave trapping. So what uh, wave near trapping for the annular metamaterial cylinder, we can assume the wave number K um, to be complex and consider the solution which uh, uh, represents localized wave oscillations that uh, uh, exist in the in the absence of instant wave forcing. So that is to say, um, that is to say, the vector of the right hand side of the matrix equation becomes a zero vector. Uh, to have uh, non-trivial uh, solutions, the determinants of the matrix, uh, I mean, co coefficient matrix A should be zero. Uh, but it should be noted that th this equation depends on the circular mode N. So you can see N here and uh, N here. So for different circular modes, the root K would be different. Uh, so this figure shows the uh, wave uh, near trapping uh, related roots. So figure A shows the roots in the complex uh, wave number of plane for the uh, circular. Uh, modes and equaling to six. The blue uh, dashed lines uh, identify the real part uh, of this uh, uh, function, while the pink solid lines correspond to the uh, imaginary part uh, of, uh, of this equation. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, sorry, so one this equation uh, is. Uh, well, this equation uh, equaling, uh, is equal to zero. So the intersection points of these counters indicate the locations of the roots. Uh, figure B plots the roots uh, as the circular modes varies from one to 15. So you can see um, uh, the roots for, for, uh, for n re um, ranging between, uh, I mean, between five and 10, uh, they are quite close to the real axis around uh, four. So the, uh, the, uh, the values are listed here. So it is very clear that uh, the first cluster here, uh, the first cluster of the spikes of the uh, response can be associated with this, uh, with this loss. So you see the, uh, this this value here and this 3.909 here, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, so we can tell the spikes or the frequency response of the uh, far field hurting coefficients are associated with the wave near trapping. Um, so uh, next one. So to, uh, to have a better understanding of the wave patterns at the near wave trapping and resonant wave frequencies, in this slide, we present animations of the wave motion for two specified wave conditions. The first column is the result for the uh, near wave trapping with um, n equaling to six. The second column uh, is for the, uh, the first resonant frequency. So the first row is the overall wave field. The second row is the scattered wave field. For the resonant wave frequency, 
the scattered waves are, um, you can see here, uh, they are uh, generated at the front side, I mean, front side ha uh, half ring of the annular material uh, cylinder. And taking that as a center, uh, propagate outwards in all directions. Uh, the scattered waves are perfectly uh, transmitted through each small channel with no phase delay. While for the near trapping wave frequency, so, um, you can you can see the, the, the local localized wave oscillations exist, and the dramatic response of the scattered uh, waves is observed at the annular domain. The scattered waves are generated all over the annular material cylinder and taking the out edge as the series of um, sources uh, propagate outwards. Okay, so uh, conclusions. So we have studied uh, what wave interaction with an annular material cylinder. So we found that uh, there can be hardly any back scratching for a wide range of wave frequency. Uh, the resonance frequencies were predicted around which the near non back scattering generally happens. We have observed, uh, uh, yes, sorry, I think I forgot to mention one, one thing. Uh, so uh, in, in the middle, I mean, at the central point, there is no wave scattering at all for all wave conditions. So this can be theoretically proved. Uh, proved. So we have proved that uh, for all the wave conditions, so, uh, no matter how large the wave uh, numbers, you cannot see any wave scattering at the center of the cylinder. So you see, uh, this is the uh, wave res resonant uh, frequencies, no wave scattering at the center point. This is wave near, near trapping case. So you can see there's no uh, wave scattering. Uh, this figure as well. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's no, there's not any scattered wave contribution at the center point of the annular cylinder. And the spikes of the frequency response or the far few uh, scattering coefficients are associated with the wave near uh, wave near trapping. So part two, uh, the, the work was reported in the uh, International uh, Water Wave Workshop at, uh, of uh, Floating Bodies uh, last year. Um, additionally, we have also done some extended work. So when the uh, annular ring is partially open, uh, we found that uh, uh, there is still no wave scattering I mean, there's no uh, scattered wave contribution at the center at the, uh, the center point. Uh, when the material cylinder uh, is made from curved plates, you can see the shape like that. Uh, so, uh, no wave scattering at the center point. So this conclusion is not valid anymore. Uh, but we got some other interesting findings. So you can see this in this figure, the so wave motion outside the annular cylinder is symmetrical about the axis of the incident uh, uh, of the incidence uh, of plane waves. The field enclosed by the uh, annular cylinder is also uh, symmetrical, uh, but the plane of uh, uh, symmetry is uh, def uh, deflected from the incident uh, plane waves. And the deflection angle is uh, determined by the angle difference between the, uh, the two uh, ends of the curved plate. Okay, so thank you for listening. So uh, what I have just presented is a joint work with uh, Deborah uh, Richard Porter from uh, Bristol and uh, Hui Liang from uh, Singapore. So a big thanks to them for their contribution. Uh, at the very end, a kind of reminder that we are running a special issue uh, entitled uh, Recent Advances in Marine Hydrodynamics in Physics of Fluids. So you can scan this code uh, to access the link. Uh, 
So, so this is the deadline. The deadline submission deadline is uh, uh, 31st in May this year. Uh, you are very welcome to submit your work to our special issue. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Any questions? Dr. Jain. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Yeah. For meta material, what is the extra equation? Uh, you mean the Laplace equation? Oh. Yes. This one? Oh, sorry, wait a second. Uh, this one? Uh, no, this is a uh, governing equation for the meta material case. Yeah, it is uh, second column, last one. Am I right? Second uh, column, last one. So uh, the material cylinders, uh, there, there, uh, there are many, a uh, large number of uh, parallel plates uh, yeah, inside the cylinder. So the water waves is allowed to propagate along the channel between the plates. So that means uh, the velocity in that uh, perpendicular to the plates is zero. So as a result, the Laplace equation uh, changed from this one to the reduced version. Is it possible for the, for the flexible case? Uh, if sorry, if, if flexible. cylinder is flexible, flexible cylinder, then can we add a uh, metamaterial? Uh, so what do you mean? You mean flexible cylinder? What do you mean by a flexible cylinder? Sorry. Suppose flexible plate type, elastic plate, elastic plate. Elastic plates. Can we uh, can we add the matter matter material thing? Uh, so uh, you mean the flexible plates is a free floating plate or vertical yes, yes. plate? No, any either vertical or uh, floating. Yeah, I think we, we could uh, consider uh, this kind of uh, materials. Yes, we can. Yeah. I think that would be very similar. Uh, for the present case, uh, we consider the, the damping effect out of the free surface, uh, which is uh, relatively simple. We could also consider, uh, I mean, on the free surface, it's a uh, elastic plate. Yeah, we, we can do that. But yes. we need to find the reason why we need to uh, resolve <laughs> that problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for your nice talk. Okay. Any question from audience? Offline? Online? Professor Sai, any question? Professor Sai, any question? Uh, very impressive work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Siba, sir? Dr. Siba? Okay, if there is no... Siba, sir? If there is no question, we can take photo. I request all the participants who are joining online, can you on your camera? Siba sir? Okay. Siba sir? 
ठीक बात है ओके सर कैन यू कंक्लूड सर Thank you, Pakistan. Thank you, Madam President. Here, uh, next session will start at two p.m. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Where is that? Where is that? Thank you, Dr. Jain. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Pashma. Bye bye. And uh, sorry for the delay. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, okay. we'll do that later. Yeah. Thank you all. Have a good day, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Okay, the two of them will be sponsored. No, we can't. Sir, your so voice is not very good, sir. Four class high lecture is there. The close is here for you. Sir, you are telling anything? Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Sir, uh, now it is lunch break from uh, 12.40 now. So at that uh, 1.45 they have to come, sir, to join. Okay, 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 sir. No okay, next lecture from uh, Satya Jitra, IIT Madras. He already reached? No, 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 not yet come. Have you called, sir? Will, uh, yes, sir, morning okay? itself. Yeah, yeah, morning itself I called. Eh? He will be come by his own vehicle. That uh, Quila sir will take care of this. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank okay, you. Sir, bye, 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 sir. Bye, bye. bye. bye.